I did all the time, uh, pretty consistently. I, I'm not quitting today. Uh, I, I don't believe, and I just talked to the president, I don't think I'm being fired today. Um, and uh, I am not so frustrated in this job that uh, I'm thinking of leaving. So uh, unless things change, I'm not um, quitting, I'm not getting fired, and uh, I don't think I'll fire anyone tomorrow. More on the unusual appearance there in the White House briefing room today, the man who reportedly leads containment strategies for a, quote, unhinged president. It's funny, I, I, I read in the paper, you, well, you, you all know, you write it, that, uh, you know, I was, I, I've been uh, a failure at controlling the president or a failure at controlling his tweeting and all that. I, again, I was not sent in or I was not brought to this job to control anything but the flow of information to our president so that he can make the best decisions. What about when that flow of information comes from Sean Hannity? He lobbed some softballs to Trump last night, and a person close to the White House tells the LA Times Trump often calls Hannity right after the Fox News hosts nightly show, and allies saying Trump's frustrated with Kelly, refusing to be managed, and he's started to call people more on the weekends from his cell phone. The White House disputes that report. Now, here are the two of them last night and in the past on the media and free speech. Media is bad. They're really dishonest people. I call it fake media. It's fake. fake it's news. so much fake news. And we you have agree to agree with understand that fake news. <laughs> truly dishonest people in the media and the fake media. The alt radical left propaganda destroy Trump media. They're on a mission to take down President Trump. I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. Journalism is dead. You guys are done. You've been exposed as fake. Fake media, fake news. And for a president who can't seem to get on the same page with many people in his cabinet, he does sound unified with his friend, Sean. Your communities are being hurt because of illegal immigrants, crimes and drugs that are coming across the border. We will get the criminals out, the drug lords, the gang members, we're getting them out. Obamacare itself is a single fundamental, massive, big government failure. Obamacare was one of the biggest broken promises in the history of politics. When it comes to recognizing the violence that took place and both sides were involved in the fighting. Do you think there's blame? Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. The Americans don't want to see the flag and the national anthem disrespected. For people to disrespect that by Kneeling during the playing of our national anthem, I think, is disgraceful. I'm joined by Maya Wiley, a former counsel to the mayor of New York, now at the New School, and Margaret Carlson, a columnist for the Daily Beast. Uh, Maya, is this the secret chief of staff that uh, sh that you know Sean Hannity's the the chief of staff Trump never had? He's just the BFF Trump never had, I think, <laughs> which is to say uh, Donald Trump has always demonstrated that he is particularly interested in people who make him feel good about himself. I think what we've seen is Hannity has done that repeatedly by not, by, as you said, throwing him softballs and generally supporting him no matter what he says or does, unless DACA it departs from some fundamental conservative belief that Sean Hannity has, but otherwise has been one of his closest allies in the news media. And so I think what we're seeing is the way a president can be influenced by someone who supports him. Uh, and Margaret, uh, Steve Bannon got his campaign and ultimately White House job, and it all started with interviews on Breitbart Radio. Right. You know, you, you can also see Trump change his opinion to match Sean Hannity's. If, if Trump leaves the Hannity reservation, Trump will then adjust his positions as he did on DACA. Um, you know, uh, Hannity, you know, uh, uh, draws such a warm bath for Trump that he sometimes, you know, has too much room, mm. as he did last night, and he says things that, that don't add up. When he talked about you know, the missiles that we have that can block missiles in the air, um, we don't, you know, two at a time. I don't think we really have that kind of defense, system, Star, Star Wars defense system yet. And he brings up the stock market repeatedly, which, by the way, the stock market is covered pretty consistently on every, every news channel. Uh, and he says, well, the debt, the national debt is going down because the stock market has gone up so much. 
There's no relationship between the two. But Hannity would never, ever correct him. But this bromance, you know, doesn't work for Trump because he needs a John Kelly, as we saw at the beginning. He doesn't need a Sean Hannity. He needs somebody who, who brings him in within the guardrails, not lets him roam all over the place. Well, Margaret, you make the great point that the relationship between Hannity and Trump is uh, much closer than the relationship uh, between our debt and our stock market. Um, <laughs> here they were at the end getting, getting really, you know, bromantic. I will say this. You have been so great, and I'm very proud of you. And, you know, I'm a ratings person. You notice I always talk. Okay. Has anyone seen his rating? I'm very proud of you. And it's an honor to be on your show. I have to tell you that, show. First of all, Margaret, mm -hmm. you never sign off our interviews like that. No. I have to tell you, Ari, you're not it's proud. such an honor. You're just yes. not proud. And that's Very fine. Proud. You don't have to be proud. You know, I don't know you that well. Uh, but I know you well enough to make that joke. <laughs> Margaret, what do you see there in the strategy of a president working with uh, an ally in the press there who are both so committed, as we showed in the lead, to really degrading the factual reporting that's going on in which we've seen a lot of Americans, he's talking about ratings, seen a lot of Americans embrace a lot of journalism since Trump's election, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, ProPublica, and a lot of other places, because facts are so important right now. Uh, your view of that part of this? You know, if only we could go back to that long ago day when we all agreed on the basic facts. That seems to be gone. I hope it's only temporary. Trump would like to suspend the First Amendment for a while so he could uh, straighten out the media, which hasn't gone his way. You know, uh, can I bring up when John Kelly said today, I'm not so frustrated, I'm not so frustrated that I'm thinking of leaving. Uh, back to you, Ari. If I said, Ari, I'm not so frustrated that I'm thinking of never being on your show again, <laughs> yes. I could be that frustrated. Yeah, right? it's, a, it's mean, a tell. It, it's, a, it's a linguistic tell. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Um, uh, that was not fake news. There we had John Kelly right in front of us, except to the extent it might have been a hostage tape where he was sent out to say these things. Well, it, it had echoes of Sean Spicer, uh, Amaya, although I will say uh, John Kelly is generally a more responsible and factual steward, uh, although I was criticizing some of what he said earlier in the show, but it had that same thing of the Spicer thing where he'd be marched out there and you got the feeling he just came out <clears> of <throat> a yelling Oval Office and we know they've been shouting, be, be, if you believe the LA Times report, that, they're, that Kelly's in a shouting match with him about, about these things. Absolutely, but I, I don't think anyone takes a chief of staff job uh, for a president of the United States and expects not to be yelled at once in a while. Sure. And I don't think that's enough to make a John Kelly quit. Uh, I think it's a more pertinent question whether Donald Trump is going to go after Kelly and try to push him out. That's actually a different issue from whether John Kelly right. himself will step back. But it's, it's a hot seat job, um, and he's a person who can take the heat, so I think it would be wrong to count him out. Yeah. Uh, Maya Wiley and Margaret Carlson, thank you both. Coming hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.